Well, this is the culmination of a search which has been going on for some time now. It is uh, going to be an achievement, I trust, which results in the verification to a very high degree of accuracy, what we call the standard model. Uh, this missing scalar boson has been perplexing us for some time, and the fact that the data now seem to say that we're on the threshold of a major discovery is uh, incredibly gratifying and uh, exciting to be here, and gratifying because I've had the privilege of being associated with this. It is uh, very exciting and very commendable. It shows that the people who put this machine together did uh, an excellent job. And uh, uh, some of my colleagues have remarked about how amazingly trouble-free uh, this machine has been. And Jerry Gorelnik and I go back 50 plus years. We learned our physics together and we've talked physics a whole lot over the decades, both as undergraduates, graduates, postdocs and beyond. And um, in 1964, I uh, went to Imperial College where he was located and uh, Kibble was a uh, slightly more senior person there. And um, we knew that there were big problems with the uh, so-called Goldstone theorem. Goldstone theorem was something which had hobbled efforts to construct the electroweak interaction theory. Uh, Weinberg is my uh, source on this, and in his Nobel lecture, he refers to the fact that when he tried to unify the theory of weak and electromagnetic interactions, uh, it was uh, a very difficult thing to do because of the fact that the models which he would come up with would have an excess of zero mass particles. And, uh, you know, uh, these are very difficult to accommodate. Other than the photon, we just don't have them sitting around too much. So uh, he was, uh, he confesses to being very upset and uh, very discouraged in the search for the electroweak theory. But then our work came along, the symm broken symmetry work, which enabled one to get rid of these zero mass particles. And uh, once that was done, he uh, unified the electric, electromagnetic field and the weak interaction theory and came up with a beautiful theory, which only a few years later was verified by the discovery of the W and Z particles and led to a nice set of Nobel Prizes. So uh, it was uh, very satisfying to see things like that happen back in the 70s. And uh, fortunately, there was still something in our theory which uh, had yet to be checked out, and that was the excessive boson, the scalar boson, which is now being searched for. And uh, one of the lucky things, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that First, I've been privileged to have enough years added to my life to see this thing more or less come to fruition. And another thing is the fact that uh, you know, we did this back in the 60s. We assumed a very simple model, and physicists like to do that. Uh, don't com complicate things at the outset. You can put the complications in later. Display the underlying physics by means of a simple model. And so that was a model which had just a single scalar boson floating around at the end. And uh, lo and behold, uh, when the LHC zeroed in on this, it turned out that, yes, uh, the single boson interpretation does seem to be okay. Now, I don't want to say <laughs> that we have the final answer at hand, but it's very encouraging and very exciting that nature has picked the same uh, example which we used 50 some years ago and that we don't have to wait for more complicated versions of this theory to be checked out. One of the things which really drove us back in 64 is the fact that we were obsessed, almost uh, unfortunately excessively obsessed 
with the explicit demonstration of the pre precise mechanism whereby this zero mass problem was uh, uh, avoided. Uh, in retrospect, maybe we should have, well, glossed over a few points and hustled into the uh, publication uh, arena a little bit earlier than we did. But in retrospect, uh, also we can say we did a, uh, derive a great deal of satisfaction from doing this thing in a very complete way.